ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا مولانا سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله خير النبي اجتباه بدا للعالمين ارسله ارسله الله بدين الحق ليذهب عن دين كل ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا مولانا سيدنا محمد وعلى ازواجه وذريته واصحابه والتابعين والتابعين باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد عباد الله اذكركم اياي بتقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى وذكركم بقوله سبحانه وتعالى في القران الكريم حيث يقول يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وذكركم اياي بحفظ القران الكريم وسنه سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for affording us this opportunity alhamdulillah for another week of juma it's a blessed day it said that the believers have the two eids the adha and the eid al fitr and that there is an eid usbu'iyah that there is a weekly eid and the reference is to it being yawm al juma so it is a blessed a day may allah subhanahu allow us to realize alhamdulillah and benefit from the blessings of this day allahumma amin it's another opportunity to alhamdulillah read uh, surah al-kahf which is a sunnah on this day which it says that no sin is left in between the week of reading kahf to the next week of reading kahf may allah subhanahu allow us to have that benefit allahumma amin alhamdulillah we are at that time of year again or this time of month where the moon is about to disappear and then reappear and when it reappears alhamdulillah will be in the blessed month of Rabi'ul Awwal alhamdulillah a month in which the Prophet sallallahu is born in so what i wanted to do inshallah ta'ala in our short time here in our khutbah is just to uh, speak a little bit about the seerah but in a manner that relates inshallah ta'ala to situations perhaps that we find ourselves in now and what I want to uh, talk about is in the context of how do we deal with hardships. If we look at the seerah, you know, when we're faced with hardship, it's easy for us to just give up and walk away from the challenges or to complain and blame those around us. But is this the way of the Prophet we have to ask this question? We can fall into depression, feel sad about their situation, feel powerless. We may ask ourselves even, why is this happening to us? Or what did we do to deserve this? But again, we have to ask ourselves the question, is this the way of the Prophet ﷺ, who we claim to follow? So, looking at some of the hardships of the Prophet ﷺ, let's look at the first, which I believe is the beginning of the revelation and its hardship on him we all know the story that he is in and Jibreel comes to him and commands him we know this that Jibreel comes to the Prophet and he commands him to read. He says, I cannot read. And he squeezes him. I cannot read. He squeezes him. I cannot read. He squeezes him again. The Prophet ﷺ, it says that he runs to his wife, Khadija radiallahu anha, Zamiluni, Zamiluni, cover me, cover me. Now, one of the things that is beautiful about this in terms of the uh, blessed. Uh, order in which the Prophet ﷺ is married to his wives, may Allah be pleased with all of them, is that it said that I have heard some scholars say that because Khadija radiallahu anha was older in age, and that she had the maturity to be able to deal with that situation, and that she could alhamdulillah console the Prophet and, and give him what he needed in that time. So again, 
he narrates that it was as Jibril was squeezing me, it felt as if my sides were going to burst. Scholars have mentioned that this acknowledges the difficulty of the Quran, that the revelation itself is not easy, and we know this on the Prophet's Islam, and it will literally squeeze the blameworthy tra traits out of us and make us the best person we can be if we allow it to. This Quran will squeeze the blameworthy traits out of us and make us the best person that we can be if we will allow it to. But we have to understand that there is a difficult process that we will go through to achieve that reality. Just as the Prophet endured this difficult, this, this difficulty, this hardship to bring this revelation to us. And as we said, Khadija radiallahu anhu consoles him, radiallahu anha, consoles him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that this represents that after the hardship is ease. And what does she say to him? She reminds him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not afflict him with something bad when all it is that you do is good. You take care of the orphan. You look after the widow. You give charity to people that are in need. You help the oppressed. How can your Lord abandon you? This is a reality that we have to constantly remind ourselves with in our community right now. That how will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turn away from us if we are committed to acts such as this? But rather it is only a reminder that there is only good that we will find from good. When we have committed ourselves to this good as a community, alhamdulillah, the work that happens here, the charity that happens here, the sadaqah that happens here, the uh, facilitating vehicles for people, the uh, program and support that happens within this community, inshallah ta'ala, if it's khalid sallallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will only find good from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, irrespective of what is happening outside in reference to us as Muslims. Whatever claim that people want to make, make those claims as long as we're working to that which is good, alhamdulillah. And this is proof positive here of that. So alhamdulillah, we have to think in the same way as I said, that if we are committed to that which is good, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not abandon us, irrespective and regardless of what people want to do to us. <coughs> alhamdulillah, when we commit to good, and he will send assistance, right? Warqa ibn Nawfal, we know this. But the cousin of Khadija radiallahu anha, and he said, I wish I were younger. I wish I could live up to a time when the people would turn you out. Anyone who came with something similar to what you have brought was treated with hostility. And if I should be alive today, then I would support you strongly. We have to remind ourselves of that. We have to constantly remind ourselves of that. There will be people that are in opposition to what we want to do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turn their hearts and enlighten their hearts. Allahumma ameen. Alhamdulillah. So this is something, alhamdulillah, as I said, just with the revelation itself of the hardship that the Prophet wasallam endured. And as we said, هَلْ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَى الْإِحْسَانِ That can we expect anything from good from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we ourselves are committed to good? This is an ayah, alhamdulillah, that confirms that. So if we look at this and the hardship that the Prophet wasallam endured, and we can put this into perspective, the first three years, the da'wah is spent in secret. The fourth year, the da'wah moves to public and we know what happens. There is abuse, there is ridicule, there is even separation. The fifth year is Abyssinia. The sixth year, they are strengthened with the conversion of Umar radiallahu anhu and Hamza radiallahu anhu. And then that brings us to the seventh, eighth, and ninth year. So you want to talk about hardships that we're facing right now? Go back and read year 7, 8, 9, 10 of the Hijrah. <coughs> before, I'm sorry, before Hijrah, in the Meccan years. 7, 8, 9 are the years of the ban. The years of the ban, starvation brought the Prophet the tribes of Hashem and Muttalib against him. Right? Blockade of food. It was so great that the Muslims were in a state nearly of starvation outside of Mecca. Some of the most noble of the Meccans, we have to remind ourselves of that. Just because we've achieved some sort of status in this dunya, don't be perceived or don't be deceived that Allah will not test you because of that. We have to be very clear with ourselves in that. 
that whatever comes is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to whoever we are and whatever we have achieved in this world, none of us is safe from that. But alhamdulillah, as I said, if we are working good, it will only be good from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the manner that He subhanahu wa ta'ala manifests that in our lives. May Allah give us strength to understand it. They were forced to eat the leaves of the tree, boil the skins of the animals. It was said that the cries of the children of Mecca could be heard filling the air. And during the four sacred months, when it was prohibited for them to include, to continue with the ban, that when they would come, the Muslims would come into Mecca to buy food, how would the Meccans, how would the Quraysh respond to them? They would raise the prices, making it unable for them to purchase. So think about that. That means right now, any one of you who is Muslim, khalas, you're fired. And you want to come to the store to buy some food? Well, here's the Muslim price right now, and you can't afford it. That's the reality that our Prophet Islam and that Ummah went through. So we should take a step back for a moment. Not to belittle any trials that we're going through right now, but understand that through that hardship will come ease, and that Allah Taala was training that community with something. Similarly, we should look at the seerah for ourselves to be trained during this blessed time, during this blessed month. Looking at the realities of life of the Prophet and understanding how we can implement them in our lives now, alhamdulillah, as a means of example. If not, then they are just stories that we read to our children that night to put them to bed. But they're more than that. These are the values and the ethics that we live by and die by. That's the reality of this. May Allah give us strength, Allahumma Ameen. So he said in their misguidance, the Quraysh, this is their own family members. These are not strangers. These are their own family members. Raising the price on them. Making the food unable to purchase at that time. And when the Prophet Islam would enter into Mecca, met by people following him, taunting him, and harassing him, just like these fools now that want to make claims in the public sphere about who he is. But alhamdulillah, if they came to understand the beauty of who he was, they would make tawbah. May Allah open their hearts to that. And may Allah open up the reality of who the Blessed Prophet is in our lives. Alhamdulillah. So as we said, this ban had lasted for three years, but then the help was given to them. And when the ban was lifted after the three years and they enter into the Kaaba and remove the ban that was written on the wall, we all know the story. We all know the story. That all of the conditions that laid that were laid out for the ban eaten up by insects. So the only thing that is remaining on this is Bismillahumma. O oh Allah in your name. Allah will send help and assistance from a place that we could never even perceive it to be. Allah will send help and assistance from wherever. And I'm sure all of us have experienced that at some point in our lives, on a micro level. It is also on a macro level as well too. It is also on a macro level as well too. A lot of times now, that is year seven, year eight, year nine, which then brings us into year 10. What is year 10 known as in the seerah? The year of sadness. So if 7, 8, and 9 and the ban were not difficult enough, we're really going to now see what sadness looks like. In year 10, the year of sadness, this is the year that Abu Talib dies. And it means that the Prophet is no longer receiving the protection. Because Abu Talib was the chief of Quraysh while he was alive. It's mentioned about him that he would never eat the evening meal without the Prophet Sallallahu being there. And some have said in the commentaries that I read is because he wanted to know that the Prophet Sallallahu was safe. He understood the dangers that he Sallallahu was faced with. Dangers that we are not faced with. So Abu Talib dies in year 10. Three months after his death, the Prophet's blessed wife, Lady Khadija radiallahu anha, passes into the mess into the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what did he salam, say about her? She believed in me while people disbelieved in me. 
She trusted me while people rejected me. And she comforted me in person and in wealth when the people would not. Allah provided with, with me, Allah provided me with children by her and not with others. This is the love that he has for both of them. May Allah be pleased with her. So now what happens? The same year in year 10, as if the death of Abu Talib and the death of Khadija anha, are not enough for him to endure. Because of the protection that he وسلم, received in Mecca from Abu Talib being the head of Quraysh, that is now lifted. So now he's attacked وسلم, verbally. Physically, this is the story that we know about that we also that we often read to our children about the when he's in sujood and he's at the Kaaba and that the dirt is placed on him and the entrails of the camel are placed on his back when he's in sujood. The entrails of a camel that has been slaughtered, just like you slaughter on the Eid, and you take out all of the entrails, all of that filth from a sheep, which is repulsive to us. Imagine what that is like on a camel. It has been sitting out in the sun and rotting and, fest rotting and festering. That that is what is placed on his back, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he's in sajda. After he's gone through seven, eight, nine of the ban. After he has dealt with the death of his uncle Abu Talib. After he has dealt with, dealt with the death of Khadija. That now this is what is happening to him. But does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not love him? Of course he does. So we should think about when the things that are happening in our lives that look like somehow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with us, that maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using this as a means for us to draw nearer to Him. To have an opportunity, alhamdulillah, to grow in our strength and our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this part, if we know this story, but you have to think about it in the context of which it's happening. He's pushed out of Mecca because these types of things continue to happen over and over and over again. So what does he go to? He goes to Ta'if. And he's attacked in Ta'if. He spends 10 days there. Before he leaves, Fatima anha is crying. And he consoles her, do not cry, my daughter, when these entrails are placed on top. Do not weep, my daughter. Allah will verily protect your father. Allahumma amin. So he is teaching us with this statement right here to place our complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as I said, we are in the blessed month of Rabi'il Awal, that this is a month, alhamdulillah, where this should be in the forefront of our lives, that we're studying the seerah of the Prophet Islam to understand the realities that we are in. So then perhaps we will not be as readily uh, 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 ready to, to, to say that these are the, first, the worst four years that the Muslims have endured underneath this administration. How about these four years? How about the four years of a, three years of a ban and then the Am al Huzn? How about that as the most difficult time? But we want to claim the difficulty that this is the most difficult time underneath this administration. Not even close. Not even close. This is time for us to reflect. Time for us to come to the realization of the situation that we are in and understand that this Ummah has endured far worse than this. Far worse than this. Perhaps the reason why we are so astonished at the situation right now is because we actually haven't read our own history. And we haven't understood the realities of what invasions look like and what the Ummah has endured. But if it was up to us, then probably it would have been lost. But it's not because it's protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That this is his deen and we are his servants. And he will do with us however he wills it to be. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He does whatever he wills. But as we said, that all the time, the outward manifest is not the reality that exists with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The outward that is manifest is not the reality that exists 
with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as we said, but his da'wah was not accepted after 10 days in Ta'if, and that he, so Islam, is enduring all of this. And after all of this, and we know this, and I'm just going to read here the, 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 the English, that he turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he prays, O oh Allah, to you alone I complain of my weakness, my insufficient ability, and my insignificance before people. He doesn't turn and blame everybody else. He doesn't turn and blame everybody else. He, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, turns to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And this is the reality of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the reality of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what he's teaching us. إِذَا حَزَّبَهُ أَمْرٌ إِتَّجَهَا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ إِذَا حَزَّبَهُ أَمْرٌ إِتَّجَهَا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ That's the reality of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that when any type of hardship and affliction faced him, he turned to pray. He didn't turn complaining to this person, complaining to that person, complaining to, this is a message to myself. This is a message to myself standing in front of you right now, of where do my complaints go when hardships come? Because if they're not going to Allah, then that's the wrong place that they're going to, as taught to us by our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is the seerah teaching us over and over again. Are we the people? Are we those people? Are we those people? We have to ask ourselves over and over and over again to remove ourselves from the complacency that we find ourselves in and wake up to the realities of this. Because all of us are going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. brothers and sisters in closing if you look at this it is this this these years are literally the years of inam al usri yusra wa inam al usri yusra that after hardship is ease after hardship is ease after hardship is ease all of us are going to face that in our lives to one degree or the next and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will push us to that edge because he knows that that's what we can handle that's the reality of us feeling like we're at our breaking point. But the reason why we are there is because Allah knows that that is our threshold and that's what we can handle. But a lot of times we don't want to be pushed to that place. And that's the message that he's sending us over and over and over again. But perhaps the reason why that we can't handle it is because when it comes to turning to that thing which can remove it from us, we're not turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we're looking yameen and shala, we're looking right and left for some other solution that can bring us out of it. Everything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is creation. So you're asking the creation which cannot help us or benefit us, but it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the creator that can help us. If you look at this now, that, that, that gift, that gift that comes after seven, eight, nine, ten of hardship, what is the gift that comes in eleven? Isra'ah. He saw Islam, you want to endure hardship as he did? Then here's my gift, yeah. Here's my gift. Come into the divine presence with me. And I'll give you the gift to your ummah of salat. And as I said, that the salat of the believer five times a day is the Isra'a and the Raja. 
So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our prayer to be an Isra in your heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us, alhamdulillah, to emulate the life of the Prophet to the best of our abilities. Allahumma alhamdul mu'minina wal mu'minat, al muslimina wal muslimat, al ahai min wal amwat, ya arham ar rahimin. Allahumma kun ma'ana wa la tukun alayna abadan ya rabbil alameen. Allahumma ta'alayna fathan qariban nubinan wasi'an fathan illi bi karamika rahmatik ya arham ar rahimin. Allahumma arhamna fawq al arh. وتحت الأرض ويوم نقوم بين يديك يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعل القرآن الربيع قلوبنا وشفاء صدورنا يا رب العالمين ونورا في قبورنا يا رب العالمين اللهم أكرمنا بتلاد كتابك آناء الليل وأطراف النهار يا رب العالمين اللهم إذ علينا فتوه عارفين وفقنا توفيق الصالحين وانفع اللهم بالقرآن وذكر الحكيم اللهم أرحم أمتي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم خفف عن أمتي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم فرج عن أمتي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم وانصر أمتي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أقيم الصلاة يرحمني يرحمكم الله